What's going on? So today we've got the best follow along workout for knee pain. Why? Because recently I was in Germany wakeboarding, being stupid, went off a ramp, landed wrong, and pretty sure I tore my meniscus, might've done something to my ACL, I'm not sure. I did something like this similarly, similarly, more similar, similar to this four years ago when I was in line skating. Anywho, long story short, went to a chiropractor, been getting deep tissue massage, saw an orthopedic surgeon. And anyways, I've got a game plan coming up for myself, but I've been trying to do all sorts of stuff to help nurture my knee and get it back to health so I can go snowboarding this winter because I'm not missing out on that trip. So we're gonna go through this workout today and I'm gonna share with you what I've been doing in this follow along workout. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's workout. My name's Frank. Hope you're doing well in this channel, on this channel. I'm gonna help you move, feel, and look better through mobility, training, and nutrition. And especially today, we're gonna to be focused on our mobility and getting great range of movement if we have knee pain. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, as always, please go ahead and click that link down in the description or down in the comment section if you'd like to go ahead and skip straight into the follow along workout. Now, in today's workout, we're just gonna utilize a few things. I am personally gonna use this vibrating double massage ball by Trigger Point. You can use this, it has three levels of intensity. Um, also, you can use a foam roller. You can also use the vibrating foam roller, which in the middle of this workout, depending on how I feel, I may use this on a certain move. Um, the vibrating foam roller is kind of nice. It is a little extra firm. If you can handle the pressure, let's use it. Or you may decide to use the basic foam roller. Also, you can use the regular version of this. You don't have to use the pricier one. They have a cheap foam one that you can get on Amazon for like 10, 12, $11. Maybe a sporting goods store near you for about 20 bucks. Feel free to use that. But all of these mobility tools is like a tool in your toolbox. You will use them for different occasions depending on what kind of pain or what area it is in your body. So all we're gonna need today, you can use one of these. Today, like I said, I'm gonna use this double massage ball. I'm gonna use the vibrating roller. Also, we need an exercise bench or an ottoman or a sofa. You just need something to sit on. It could be a chair, whatever. I'm gonna use the bench. But we're gonna go through a 10 minute workout today. It's an easy follow along workout. It's all gonna be instructional. We've got 10 unique moves and we're just gonna focus on one leg or that knee that's bothering you. But I would highly recommend for you to repeat this workout. I'm not gonna make it a long 20 minute workout. It's just gonna be 10 minutes but I would like for you to repeat all this stuff on the opposite leg because this is the best damn insurance policy your body can buy. I say that line a lot because this is gonna help, obviously help you recover, help with the knee pain, but also on your other leg that's not injured, you wanna do the same thing because it's preventative measures, right? We all have car insurance for those of us who drive. And if you don't, you should get some because you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> but same thing, this is like body, like this is like your bodily insurance, all right? You have health insurance, but this is the stuff that you need to do even if you're not doing extreme sports like me, if you're just walking, because I've seen some people trip on the sidewalk and bust their face, especially if you get older, over the age of 70, there's a 70% chance you'll fall. So wanna make sure you have that balance and stability. But anywho, gonna get sidetracked. Let's uh, go ahead, grab our water bottles. Let's get hydrated and let's rock out today's workout. Right, so let's go ahead and get 15 seconds on the clock just to start it off. Everything today is gonna to be one minute on the minute, so we're just gonna be rolling right through it. I'm gonna get some water. Because if you ever getting massage before and after, drink your water. All right, we're gonna get started, and we're just gonna do our quad massage. So, I got this thing on the highest vibration. I'm getting right on top, so not on the knee, just above the knee. I'm just gonna massage this quad. And I'm just gonna kind of roll back and forth a few times. And then I'm gonna hold the position. I'm gonna bend and extend. I like the vibrating effect of this because I can tell you immediately when I get some vibration in here, it just, it just shoots through my entire knee and it really loosens it up. So I'm gonna find a spot that's tight. I'm gonna bend and extend. And I'll be honest, when I do this, I can almost bend it even a little bit more. My knee injury is about three weeks old, okay? And like two days after injuring it and just like leaving it alone and icing and icing, I'm doing this. So I'm getting right around the knee, just onto the top. We're starting off on the top of the thigh, fishing for tight spots, bend and extend a little bit, move it down. As you bend and extend, it's gonna stretch that tissue out. It's gonna help loosen it up just a little bit more. So just massaging on there, just trying to stretch it out, loosen it up, all right? And then next, we're gonna flow right into it. We're gonna get our inner thigh massage, all right? So we're gonna get onto the inner thigh. And again, I'm getting like basically a little bit on the knee, light pressure on the knee. 
and then really getting onto that inner thigh and right, not on the knee, just above it, bend and extend. So I can really feel that all my knee, because sometimes if you have knee pain, like I did when I heard the pop, when I messed it up, it's not necessarily like, you can't massage inside or around the knee. You have to do all the tightness or all the muscles around the knee, like your quad. Because this knee pain that I am experiencing, it traveled down through my calf, my anterior tibialis, and my shin. So I wanna roll out all areas of the leg. So getting onto the inner thigh, bending and extending. When I bend and extend, especially when I, you know, flex it and do the hamstring flex, I can really feel it shoot all the way through my knee. So I'm just mashing, going all over to the side. And this is gonna help you get your range of movement back. It's gonna help with blood flow and circulation when you have all that massage going in that leg. And then we're gonna get into our IT band. This is also known as the iliotibial band. And again, it's one of the tighter muscles. So again, I'm gonna either put my foot on the back or onto the side. I'm gonna just keep it behind me and I'm gonna mash. Now I'm gonna use my hands and my foot. If it's too much pressure, drop everything down. You may just stay here. Try and bend and extend a little bit. If you can, I like to put some weight on there. Again, modulate how much pressure you're gonna put on there. I'll move to the front and I'm gonna go all the way down towards my hip. And I'm just mashing right, not on the knee, just above the knee. I'll show you here, but just above the knee, bend and extend <clears throat> and get that tissue to stretch. Again, there's not as much blood flow that goes through this IT band. So you don't want to mash it like crazy because as you get more into this, you're thinking, oh, muscles tight. Let me mash it a lot. You don't want to mash it that much. So bend and extend. You might even hold the bend, mash up and down a little bit. And we're just trying to loosen up that tissue because even with this knee pain, I feel it travel all the way down my calf, all the way down or upwards towards my thigh. Okay. Lastly, or not lastly, next, we're doing a hamstring massage, the lower hamstring, okay? And I say lower hamstring because I want it around where the knee is, okay? Now, you can go a little bit higher and we can go into the middle of it, but what I wanna do is I wanna focus and I wanna get towards just behind that knee because especially with this double <clears throat> peanut massage ball, this vibrating one, it feels so good. I cannot tell you enough. So I leave it almost like right in the middle, like behind the kneecap but that's kind of into the hamstring and into the calf. We're gonna roll out that calf next, but on that lower part of that hamstring, I'm just mashing back and forth. And this vibration is just vibrating. It's radiating all throughout my knee and it feels good. I'm telling you, that's how I was able to, I guess I didn't have a bad tear. I'll find out more when I get my MRI, but uh, yeah, fortunate because of the fact like I can almost deep squat in three weeks. So I didn't tear it as bad as I did seven or four years ago. Anywho, everybody's a little different, so you wanna make sure that you have your own program and protocol in place. So if something's too painful, don't do it. Next, we're gonna get the calf massage, basically the top of the calf, but we're gonna kinda of go back into the, that hamstring a little bit. So there's that hamstring calf tie-in, so it's kinda of be, uh, behind the knee, I go very, very light, and then I'm kinda of getting into the upper part of the calf here. So just mash it onto the calf, because like I said, even if you have knee pain, I had a lot of knee pain on the inner, the inside part of my knee, but I'm telling you, when I, when I massage certain areas, this thing, the pain started to radiate and travel down the outside of my shin. So again, we're gonna wanna address all areas because the body is like a big kinetic chain. Everything's interconnected and linked. So just because like you have low back pain, that probably means you should stretch your hamstrings, massage your glutes, see what I'm saying? So we're just trying to address everything around and that has to do with the knee. So getting this calf, I might even do a little ankle circles while I'm massaging the calf, just to get those muscles loosened up a little bit. Cause as I do those ankle circles, that's gonna stimulate my anterior tibialis, which we are rolling right now. So we're gonna get onto the side. And again, this one, this is our shin muscle, anterior tibialis. Uh, this is responsible for our, ver our vertical balance um, and basically moving our foot left and right when you do e eversion, um, moving that foot inwards, then it's, uh, or I'm sorry, inversion, inversion, eversion, inversion. So you're, you're, you're moving that foot or no, eversion, moving it in, inversion out. But anyways, you're doing that, that's gonna flex and move that shin a little bit. So we just want to move and just massage this muscle and we're just trying to loosen it up a little bit so i'm just mashing in there rotating i might even do some of those little ankle circles again just getting that ankle to mash up because again i want to get not on the knee but as i get into that shin just getting onto that that top part just a little bit okay now next now that we finished through all that what we're going to do i'm going to pull this bench in we have a few options we can do a standing 
need a chest. So I'm here. I'm just going to try and pull that knee up or we can do seated. And so with this knee to chest here, I'm just looking to try and pull it in. All right. If you don't have that much, this is might this might be all that you're able to do. Again, you could look at my knee. It's pretty swollen. Okay. So I am been every single day looking to get movement. Okay. Even if you're doing PT, you can do a little bit more. I am on the road to fast recovery. I want to be snowboarding in the next three or four months. What are we at? September, October, November, December. Yeah, I'm going snowboarding week before Christmas. I got like four months, so 16 weeks. But we're just pulling this knee up. I'm trying to get it to bend. All right. If you want to sit down again, you can just try and pull it into you. Pull that knee in towards your chest. And again, go lightly. You want to take it till it's mildly uncomfortable, but then you can back off a little bit. Okay. Next one, we're going to stand up. All right. And then we're going to do our standing hamstring curl. All right. You can use a hand for balance or you can just stand. But now I want the knee to bend a little bit differently. So instead of pulling the knee into the chest, I want to curl it. When I first injured my knee, I literally could only go like 90 degrees, barely. Now I can go a little bit more, not much, but even that's, that's putting some pressure onto this outside of my knee right there. Kind of onto the bone of the shin a little bit, but I just want to curl. All right. Now, if you have the mobility, you may um, grab the foot, do a quad hip pull. You can grab the ankle. I, I can normally grab my foot. Uh, it's a little, little tight, but I'm trying it. But again, I would rather you just curl the leg, get that movement. If you have a hard time balancing, put your hand on the bench, flatten the back, curl that leg. You might even try and grab it if you can. It's going to take some work. But again, all we're trying to do here is get movement. All right. So stand and curl, kick. Just trying to get that to bend and flex. All right. And then next move, we're going to do a seated hip glute stretch. <clears throat> and especially why you need to do this with knee pain. Because when I do this, just because of the fact this opens up my hip and glute, when the knee or that area gets torn or damaged, your glute, for me, my glute got tight, my outside of my shin got tight, the inside of my knee. So when I'm doing a hip glute stretch, I feel the inside of my knee, I feel the outside of my knee getting into my calf, my glute super tight. When you injure one muscle, it, it disrupts the force and the movement of all your other muscles. So when I was trying to do all these pigeon stretches and like yoga, for example, after I messed up my knee, my glutes were tight. So this is going to help just loosen up this surrounding tissue, my hip, my glute. But this is also I'm feeling it on the outside behind my, behind my calf and also on the inside of my knee. So I'm trying to get more movement here. I'm dropping my chest over the top. I can't even go too low because I've got a good amount of pain here. Not like a lot, but a little bit. But again, with all these stretches, you're going to take it to mildly uncomfortable to comfortable going back and forth. And lastly, we're kind of rushing. I forgot, but pause the video if you have to. We're going to do a terminal knee extension. And sorry I didn't say this earlier, but again, if you don't have this, that's fine. You can omit this, but I would strongly recommend doing it. We're going to get the band just behind the hamstring above the calf, above the bend in the knee. One foot's back. We're going to flex and squeeze. Okay. Flex and squeeze. This is one of the best things you can do to strengthen your quad is a terminal knee extension. So this is extension and then kicking the leg out would be flexion. Okay. Um, or I'm sorry, curling the leg is flexion and this is extension. We're locking it out. So basically I have resistance on the band. I'm flexing the quad. I'm pressing it down and just flexing and squeezing right here. Okay. So I'm just trying to get this quad to fire because for me, when I tore my knee recently, I can't even really feel my quad as much. So I want to flex and squeeze. Okay. Workouts over, but I'm going to keep going through this a little bit. I want to explain a little bit more because this is super important. So as I'm doing this flex, squeeze the quad, try and get this muscle to fire right now. I could feel my, uh, my vastus medialis right here, the inside flexing a little bit, but not as much. So I'm trying to get it to flex, trying to get it contracting. If you want, you might even bring this toe up a little bit more and just get onto the toe and the heel. But if I do that, I feel a little knee pain, not much, but I'm trying to get movement. I'm trying to get blood flow. I'm trying to get this muscle to fire and just get it to squeeze. Okay. So we're done with this. But as you can see when I'm doing it, like you can look at my, my legs, like this, this leg just shrunk. Okay. It shrunk like crazy because I can, I can grab all this skin. The, the muscles not firing like my right quad tight as a rock. Right. But you could look, look how swollen it is. It's, it's insane. So <laughs> I am working through this. I have all this knee pain. It looks super funky right now. It's, it just sucks to have this happen, but that's what happens. So I'm trying to get this muscle to activate. And I know I didn't say that earlier when we're doing that band, but you want to get those terminal knee extensions. So 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that resistance band into the video. Hopefully you made it all the way through. I know it's a little bit of a shocker that I didn't explain using that band in the beginning. I just talked about the massage. But if you can't get a band, do this video again. This should not be your only time watching this video. You should do it often. So please go ahead and repeat this video. I would do it on the other leg. And if you have 30 minutes, I know it's a long time, but in the world of rehab, you wanna pay attention to all this stuff so you can go ahead and live your best life and do the things you wanna do. I am doing 30 minutes a day of all this mobility and rehab, different exercises, not just this workout, but moves very similar to this workout and then some. So like I said, I would suggest do your bad knee, do your good knee, and then do the bad knee again, and that's 30 minutes. But you wanna prioritize a rehab, because if you only rehab one side of your body, chances are maybe you'll do that to the other side later or that side becomes so much better and then it feels even better than the other side and then you may injure the other side later. So this is all injury prevention, um, but also it's also to help with rehabilitation. So this could be good prehab exercises leading up to surgery to help massage the muscles. This could also be good rehab exercises after surgery. Now again, I am not your doctor, I am not your therapist, this is not medical advice. Please consult your doctor or physician before starting any of these workouts. I should have put this first, but uh, because again, you've got to know your body, you got to know your limitations. So especially with any of these mobility tips, tricks, and drills that I do, listen to your body. If it's sharpshooting, excruciating pain, stop the video, go see your doctor, get a consult, okay? But if you're doing so many stretches and there's mild discomfort, of course there's mild discomfort. I mean, you just messed up your knee or you have knee pain, it's not gonna feel that great. So you wanna take it to like mildly uncomfortable to comfortable. Like a lot of these dynamic stretches and movements that I do, if I'm curling my leg, bending my knee, get it where it's a little tight, get it where it's a little uncomfortable and then relax it a little bit, okay? And dealing with knee pain, there's a lot of other workouts that you can do, um, especially just doing maybe like two sets of 20 on the terminal knee extensions. After that, maybe I would start off with a machine leg extension, sitting onto the machine, doing those leg extensions. That's one of the ones that helped rebuilding, started helping rebuild the strength of my quad when I injured it four years ago. Obviously, I re-injured it again, but I'm so much smarter with my rehab, I'm gonna come back a lot faster. I'm gonna try and be safer, so next time I go wakeboarding or especially snowboarding this winter, I'm gonna be wearing a knee sleeve for that extra protection. So. That's gonna wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please go ahead and subscribe. Click that notification bell if you're brand new to the channel. If you'd like, you can go ahead and give thanks. Click that little button right there on to the right. Uh, you can leave me a small donation, anywhere from five, 10, or 50 bucks. It really helps out with the channel, helps me producing more content. And also, share this with a friend or family member, someone that can benefit from this information because uh, chances are someone that you may know or a loved one may have some knee pain, may even have some back pain. So. You might wanna check out some of my other videos, just like this lower body foam rolling video. It's kinda of similar to what we did today. Few different exercises, but it's all focused on loosening up your legs. We do both sides of the body, on the, or do, we do each side of the leg. We also loosen up the lower back. But browse some of my other content. I have a lot of awesome stuff on YouTube. Still finishing out my mission of getting 100 workouts in 100 weeks. We are almost there, like 75% there already. Got a little bit more to go, so please support me. Please subscribe so we can just keep pumping out this information to more people who can benefit from all of my content. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you checking out my next workout. I keep on working, got purpose and worth. Music's my cure, and this world is my purse. Get rid of this curse with every reverse. Of course, I've been hurt, but I'm not much worse. Leave me alone, get out of my head. Walk out the opinions until I am dead. They all go to speak, but you listen instead. Listen some more, and you'll cease to regret. I keep on working, I got it on track. You're gonna see my name up on a flag. I sail this ship and I'll never come back I keep this bitch on the line to attack Never look back I make a record like Crash Top of my bracket I smash I'm like a pack I'm about to stack it like cash It's gonna happen so fast It never changed myself